Hello everybody, welcome to It Was Tuesday with your host, James Chen, aka Jay Chenzor. This past weekend was the Capcom Cup uh, 10, not Capcom Cup X, Capcom Cup 10 uh, last chance qualifier. So Capcom Cup 10 is officially underway. Although every time I see the phrase Capcom Cup X, all I can think to myself is Oh man, but uh, the last chance qualifier this past weekend, and uh, as expected, it was a bloodbath and and uh, was basically, uh, in my opinion, the second hardest tournament ever uh, to win for Street Fighter VI. Obviously, Evo being the hardest with 7,000 entrants. But last chance qualifier, I mean, there was 300 and some entrants, but these are like... 300 of like the strongest players that you will ever find like every pool was already like we had just gotten past the pools of evo we're already in you know the second phase of semi-finals and it was absolutely uh ridiculous so uh let's go ahead and just start talking about the last chance qualifiers and what happened there. I mean, again, every pool was stacked to the brim, but coming out of the entire last chance qualifier, spoilers, if you haven't seen it, was Mr. Problem X. I don't know where that came from, but that's just what it is. Mouse Esports Problem X. Uh, making it out of there. There's a lot to glean from this uh, from this top from this bracket in general and the results in general. Uh, it's actually pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, few things like let's talk about some of the big things that stand out here. Okay, obviously, Punk having defeated Problem X 3-0 on the winner side. Uh, on winners finals and then problem X coming back and basically kind of blowing punk up someone actually mentioned this a little bit earlier on the chat uh, in uh, basically saying that you know is punk a choker at this point because he always seems to get to this point he got to grand finals of capcom cup and lost to idom who he had beaten many times before got to grand finals at evo and then lost to tokido when that was his year and here in the lcq he gets to grand finals and he loses the problem x to qualify for capcom cup so the question is is punk you know uh a choker right i mean Look, he won Frosty Faustings, second place in all those events. I mean, that's the kind of standards we're putting Punk at at this point. Like, we're actually saying that getting second place at some of the biggest events is being a choker, right? It's not a real choke kind of thing. He did tweet that he was super nervous, Douglas. That is correct. However... You know, there definitely has to be something to be said about this, right? Because I've always said Punk, his biggest weakness will always be himself. Like, did I'm not going to say that Problem X and Tokido and Idon didn't factor hugely into their into their wins over punks in in these big grand finals but punk is definitely a player that gets in his own head a lot of the time you know the switch to luke which i thought yeah wasn't necessarily the right choice i mean i yes cammy versus blanca is not a great match right but i mean punk was handling it uh pretty well um but at the same time you know uh could Punk benefit from a sports psychologist? Honestly? Like, I think that would be something for him to look into. I think that would actually be something for him to, to research and perhaps invest in. Because I think, um, I think having a sports psychologist might actually help him quite a bit. 
uh, these, this kind of issue is, like I said, he gets into his head a lot. And I really do feel like a lot of the times he beats himself uh, in a lot of ways. And again, this is not sa- saying anything bad about Punk here. It's just that this, dude, like he said he was nervous. All these players are nervous. This is a tough situation to be in. How many strong players just like floundered and drowned in pools and all these things like that and just didn't even make it into the semifinals, you know? This is a tough situation to handle. And so honestly, having a sports therapist, a sports psychologist to kind of help you train through these situations, I think is uh, really, really uh, important to have. Because, again, you know, some of the best athletes in the world have had sports psychologists, you know. Uh, Like I said, it's not necessarily nervous or losing the motivation to play, but doubt. You start to doubt yourself, right? You You get worried. Like, once you start losing, you're like, oh, man, is this slipping through my fingers? Like, you start asking yourself these questions, and then you start making harder reads, bad reads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, the, the, the best athletes out there are the ones that never think they're going to miss the game-winning shot, right? Uh, no matter what, they just don't doubt themselves. They just never doubt themselves. And, you know, everyone's going to be like, oh, but Punk is so cocky. Like, he's not doubting himself and everything like that. But look, man, I tell you right now, uh, you know, I, I've often compared myself to Punk. Uh, I, I get why he salty tweets because I do it all the time myself, uh, <laughs> Tepin. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I, I get that kind of nervousness. And like I said, when he cried at Evo, when he cried at Evo after losing to Tokido, uh, that really showed me what he was about. There was also a San Antonio exhibition uh, at uh, the the music festival. Whoa, geez, what was it called? I forgot what it was called uh, that we commentated. Um, and uh, Punk went 0-2 in like the group phases to get into the final bracket. And he had his head down on the table and he was really miserable afterwards. And then after losing to Tokido, he started crying you know, and, and like, like I, I, I've said it. Yes, South by Southwest. Thank you, Virgo. Yes, South by Southwest. Um, but um, when I saw those things, I, like I said, I'm an empath. Like the way my brain works, I can't tell you why or how. But when I see people and when I see certain things, like it's just like this weird superpower. Like I just get these vibes all of a sudden from them. And as soon as I saw how Punk reacted to some of these losses, I, I, I knew exactly, you know, the, the kind of mentality that he has. He is cocky because he's good. But also, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, bravado, a little bit of, you know, uh, hyping yourself up because you're trying to counter a lot of that doubt, right? You obviously have, you know, athletes like a Jordan or a Kobe Bryant who are cocky, but that's because they really just believe everything that they're the best, right? And I'm not 100% sure Punk is in that category. I, I, I really am not sure about that. Uh, I, I do think he gets in his own head. I think he second guesses himself a lot. Uh, So I think that uh, it definitely uh, gets in his way sometimes. So, uh, yes, he's a very emotional player, a hero to some, a villain to others. Yeah. And and again, that's kind of, you know, emotions, dude, they're they wreck you, man. (laughs) They wreck you. And yeah, he punches down a lot with his trash talk, but a lot of his trash talk comes from losses. And then he punches down when he loses to some people. And a lot of times it's because, you know, when I, I, I remember when I was competing and whenever I played on stream and lost, like I would tweet right away because I just wanted to jump in front of the criticisms. I just wanted to jump in front of the people who were going to make fun of me. You know, that was kind of the thing, whether it was to make an excuse or what. Like, you just wanted to jump in front of them because you don't want 
to stay silent and see everybody start typing out about you, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's kind of, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, so it, for technical analysis, I mean, for me, again, because of my empath nature, I just think he started to doubt himself. And part of me, I almost feel like in grand finals, he almost kind of didn't want to win anymore. I don't know how to explain that. Like, he clearly wanted to win. But at the same time, there was almost kind of like, I feel like there was a piece that came over him that told him, if I lose or if I win... I'm cool. And that usually is <laughs> that usually is not a good way to go into a grand finals, uh, basically. But I think that there was some weird, almost kind of calm peace to him uh, that he was like, if I lose, cool. And in fact, after he lost, if you saw, his tweet was absolutely one of the most, you know, uh, mature, friendly tweets that he ever wrote. Uh, you know, after a loss. And that's because part of me thinks that he was kind of already prepared for it in a weird way. And again, obviously, I'm putting words into Punk's head. It's not fair to Punk. I should probably just get him on here and interview him. So, Punk, if you ever run into this, like, obviously, I'm not trying to say I know you or I figured you out or anything like that. This is just my impressions. It's my interpretations of the kind of situation and uh, I, I, I do feel like sometimes that can hurt you, you know. Uh, again, as a very emotional person, I recognize the things that I have done in tournaments. And I see a lot of players do these things as well. A lot of times you're just like, oh, okay, they made this mistake. But like for me in my brain, I'm like, oh, God. He's mentally fatigued. I mean, one of my favorite commentary moments that I ever did was the year Problem X won Evo at Texas Showdown. Problem X went up against Knuckledew. He was coming from the loser's bracket, and he played Bison versus Knuckledew uh, in Street Fighter V. And he won, like, uh, no, it wasn't grand finals, but he went up 2-0. to zero. And it was such a slobber knocker. Like, Bison versus Guile is not as bad in five, but, like, he was working really hard. And then in game three, Problem X did something that was just, like, Hail Mary kind of thing. And I was, and on commentary, I was like, oh, I think this is dangerous. Knuckle Dude could make a comeback here because I think Problem X is mentally fatigued. And I don't think Knuckle Dude is. And sure enough, Problem X be just proceeded to throw away three games in a row, and he ended up losing to Knuckle Dew. And again, it was like, as soon as that moment happened, I was like, oh, oh. Like, for some reason, as soon as that one moment happened, I was like, okay, this might just turn around completely. Because... Fighting against the Guile, fighting against the Dalsum, the hardest thing about fighting against zoners is the amount of mental fatigue it produces on you. The first few games you fight a Dalsum or whatever, you play really carefully, patient, walk and block, walk and block, find your key moments to get in and whatever. And then after a while, you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. You don't actually tell yourself that, but you f mentally just check out because you're like, I'm so sick of doing this. And so you start throwing out the Hail Marys a little bit more like, well, if I just do this and I hit him, I can win. But if he blocks it, you die kind of thing. And like your brain just kind of falls apart. I remember there was a NBA game a long time ago, uh, RIP to Chick Hearn, uh, where the Lakers were fighting against the San Antonio Spurs. And at the end of the half, they were up by a lot of points. And uh, it just seemed like it was going to be a, a garbage time game. And Vladi got the Vladi Diva got the basketball and he tried to do a fancy dunk, which Vladi is not known for. He's not athletic. He misses the dunk right before halftime. And Chick Hearn on commentary was like, why, why would you do that? Just lay it in. No, you're going to lose the game now. He was like, guaranteed you guys are losing. Like, that may have cost you the entire game. 
You tried to showboat on them, and now you might lose the game. And then they lost the game. And I remember watching that, and I was just like, wow. <laughs> and they were up by like 20-some-odd points, and Chick was just like, he just knew. He felt it. There was just like a shift in the wind all of a sudden, and something was different. And he was like, no, you may have just lost the game. And sure enough, we ended up losing that game. And, you know, a lot of the times I feel that with some players. And that's why when I saw Punk playing in the grand finals, I didn't feel like, like I said, like, I, I don't, I didn't feel like he wanted to win. The reason why I worded that way is because I, I didn't feel the same kind of like, like that angry Punk you can feel the angry punk in his gameplay. And in grand finals, I did not feel the angry punk. In winner's finals, I felt it. I felt a little bit of that angry punk. But in, in uh, grand finals, I did not feel it. You know, you can always tell when punk starts to kind of lose it when he starts doing more uh, OD wake-ups as well. And he definitely got a few of those blocked. Uh, and he couldn't read Problem X OD wake-up either. So I just didn't feel quite the same. Like, it just didn't feel the same for me. And I know that's not a technical answer. That is definitely a vague emotional answer. Uh, but that's basically uh, how I feel. So, uh, well... <laughs> Lord Skullhell, the best thing about him posting that, uh, that Daigo video afterwards, someone's like, wow, you work fast, still on the content grind. Punk's response to that was, uh, last chance qualifier, don't pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> and he's absolutely right. There was no money involved in the last chance qualifiers. So he had every right to try to post some content that he got from that event. So <laughs> Punk is not washed, not even remotely washed. In fact, Punk has very much the chance to get even stronger. Right now, like I said, Punk's biggest weakness is his own mentality, and he's still super young. The older Punk gets, I feel like the better he's going to get, because I think things are going to change the way he perceives things are going to change. And, like I said, I think it would actually help to get a sports psychiatrist. I really do. I, I really do. Uh, so, you know, I think that would be, uh, something for him to look into, or maybe even FlyQuest, uh, can go and help him find a, a sports psychologist or something like that, because I think that would help him a lot. And again, like I, I again, I, I say all this stuff as a fan of punk, people who watch this stream know how much I praise punk and how much I believe in him and how much I root for him. You know, I know people think I may be a little too kind on some of the trash talk and the bad stuff that he does but like i said he's young uh, it's not an excuse but i i get it <laughs> i get it and like i said I, I feel like it's less malicious more defensive than anything it's weird it's weird to say that but sometimes maliciousness comes from defensiveness, right? You know, the stories of the bully just being actually the kid who feels alone and scared, and that's why they act the way they kind of do, right? It's, it's, a, it's a common kind of mental situation here. So, yeah, Punk's mentality is what makes him good, but that's, everybody reacts to the, the, the big moment differently. They, they really do. It's, it's a tough kind of situation. I remember when I fought Tokido in Super Turbo at, um, at Seasons Beatings. I know I've told this story on the stream before. Uh, he beat, he, it was a best of five. He won the first two games. And then I came back and tied it up two to two, Cami versus Vega. And we got to the fifth game and there's something in my brain shut off. Like something in my brain shut off. I was like, I brought this back to the fifth game. Do I really want to beat Tokido? Like, should I? Uh, and then I just started playing badly. Like I got in my own head. And then, like I said, I kind of justified my own loss. Like I'm okay with losing to Tokido now. I didn't want to go 0-3. But then when I tied it up to 2-2, two to two, I was like, 
hey, I made a show out of it, cool. Now let's let Tokido move on. <laughs> you know, it's weird <laughs> that your brain works that way sometimes. I mean, my biggest problem, I think, in tournaments really is a, I didn't have a killer instinct. I just didn't. I had too much empathy for other people, you know, and that's just one of those things. And, you know, that's not, I don't think that's why Punk is doing it. I don't think it's because he has too much empathy for other people. But like I said, I, there's all sorts of reasons that are going on in people's heads, you know, for why these kind of things happen. So, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. But I mean, like when I do feel like I have something to prove, when I played in the San Antonio Super Turbo event, everybody was super surprised that I made it out of my pools and beat a lot of people and busted out a Ken out of nowhere. And everybody was like, what the hell? And then when I went to fight Kate offline in Spain, nobody was expecting me to get to top eight. And sure enough, I got like fifth place at that tournament and beat a Honda with my Cami at one point. And everybody was like, oh my God, like, James is real in this game because like I had this like drive like I don't know I felt like I had something to prove in those events and it just changes the way you play it's it's very very interesting it's such a it's such a weird su competitive psychology is so weird I mean flow rest in peace flow biggest example of that like I said in casuals one of the greatest fighting game players I've ever seen. Ever, ever seen. He would go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Justin every single time. Every single time. And then he would get to a tournament, and as soon as he played on stream, he would lose. Because he now realizes people are watching him and judging him. And that just made it so much harder for him to play at the level that he normally plays at. Again, competitive psychology is rough. And so if anybody is like punk is washed or he's a choke artist or whatever like that, dude, you play in this tournament. You get to grand finals of Evo Capcom Cup and the LCQ, which is the second hardest tournament for Street Fighter VI ever. Like, trust me, when you are put into these positions, your brain just will go I mean, I had a friend, uh, one of my best friends, uh, Jason, every time I played him in Alpha 3 at home, he would just do the absolute stupidest things and get away with them all because he just played with no fear and he just wanted to troll. One week uh, at Golfland, he actually just entered Alpha 3, the Alpha 3 tournament because he was like, screw it, let's see what happens. And when he played, he tried to do things that I've never seen him do. He kept trying to do the same things over and over again. It was really weird. Just like all of a sudden his brain just shut off and like something just different went away. And that's just kind of what happens, right? That's, that's literally what happens. So uh, it's, it's, it's all, it's, it's a tough situation to be in. So uh, I don't, you know, uh, you know, obviously, yes, this applies the problem X and JB and Kakeru and Tokido and stuff. I mean, Tokido, remember, Tokido cried when he lost the Kimono Michi to Daigo. Remember, he won Evo and then he fought Daigo and Daigo just basically washed him and Tokido cried because he was just like, I thought I was there. I thought I was, I, I, I thought, I was better than Daigo now, and now I realize I still have a long way to go. Again, dude, every player you've seen here has had this kind of situation. It is not easy at all. So that's, that's kind of how I feel about this whole situation with Punk. Uh, so again, uh, is he a choke artist? Is he a choker? You know, uh, I definitely think he gets in his own head. Uh, but to make it that far, I mean, you can't be a choke artist to get to that, to grand finals of some of the biggest tournaments consistently, right? I mean, Fudo was doing that for a long time. Fudo got into second place a bunch of times. Yeah, some people were like, oh my God, Fudo. I don't, they never really called him a choker, but they kept calling him second place Fudo. Second place Fudo, second place Fudo, you know? And he eventually broke through. I think Punk can do the same thing. I just think he... He needs a little bit of that confidence, you know, and, and it's weird to say that about Punk, 
but I really do. I really, he has it in him. 100% he has it in him. And uh, he's not done yet. He's going to win one of the big ones sooner or later. And I feel like he just needs, like I said, either a sports psychologist or just somebody just to kind of talk to him about these kind of situations. So, yeah, exactly, j Dog. He's going to win one. He's going to win uh, one sooner or later. Uh, so I, I, did he choke? Kind of, yeah, because it's happened three times. Is he a choker? Hard to really call him that. <laughs> Hard to call him that, honestly. So, anyways, the other thing that's actually really crazy about this finals is that the Japanese players were everywhere. And they're all ridiculous. We had Kakeru, Tokido, Takauchi, Hibiki, Moke, Yamaguchi, Aqua, Nemo, Kusanagi, Sako, MOV, Daigo, Mizuha, Bonchan. Like, look at how many Japanese players they were. There was none of them in the top three. <laughs> there was, there's none of them at the top three. That's so crazy, dude. Like... What does this mean? <laughs> how, did, how did this happen? What does this mean? Does this mean that, you know, Japan is weak now? No, no. I mean, anybody trying to talk about Japan being weak is, is just off, right? But honestly, uh, really what this really just means, I mean, yeah, a lot of people will talk about the jet lag. A lot of these players are used to that, though. So they, they're actually really good at overcoming the jet lag a little bit more. I mean, players like Tokido and, 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 you know, Moke and Nemo, Sako, MOV, Daigo, Bonchan, they've been traveling a lot. So you can't necessarily use the uh, jet lag as an excuse. And again, this isn't that Japan performed badly. In fact, objectively speaking, Japan, <laughs> did the best out of all the regions. They had eight out of the 16, top 16 players. They had half of the top 16 players and half of the top eight players. Like objectively speaking, Japan did the actual best, right? Yeah, exactly. You can't use jet lag as an excuse when problem X won. <laughs> exactly. So really what it comes down to is just that I just think that the world has kind of caught up. I think we're just at a point right now where because the game releases globally and the technology comes so fast and it's more legitimate in a lot of different areas, the ability for growth, training, and everything is just so much stronger. And then on top of that, good net code, good net code. I can't even tell you how much good net code has changed everything. You could see it in Guilty Gear Strive. You know, the US players are very, very strong in Guilty Gear Strive because they play each other every day because uh, they are in different regions, but they can play every day because good net code. A lot of the East Coast, West Coast players can play each other. One of the biggest weaknesses of the U.S. has always been that the best of the West and the best of the Midwest and the best of the East could never play against each other and could never train. Even in Japan, if they were far away, and like it's not like they all lived in the same city, although a lot of players have moved to Tokyo to give themselves a better shot. But even still, it was a train ride away, right? It was literally a train ride away just to get to where you needed to go to practice people if you wanted to do that. And even then, their internet infrastructure was so good that even when we had shitty delay-based net code, their online matches were still better and a lot more playable than anything <laughs> we experienced here in the United States. So uh, it's, uh, it's, def it's, it's good net code has changed a lot. The fact that these players can play each other all the time, the fact that Punk and Knuckle do, you know, are playing each other almost every week in grand finals all the time, et cetera, et cetera, really elevates the skill level of all the players. And so I really feel like right now, if we ran this LCQ, legitimately 20 times 
Like, we would have a different top eight, like, I think all 20 times, right? It just happened to fall this way. And while we can just be like, USA, USA, UK, UK, and do whatever we want, you know, dude, it's, it's just how it happened. It's just how it happened. I just feel like the best in the world can, can come from anywhere at this point. So... Uh, I, I really don't think that there's really anything to be gleaned from this. Like, is the Japanese not as strong? <laughs> Whatever, dude. Like, come on. Come on. Clearly the Japanese are still super strong. Clearly. There's no question that they're all still super strong. So, um, so yeah, that uh, any talk of Japan uh, uh, or other regions being better than Japan, it's like, is Japan weak now? No. They're not weak. In fact, I still have this weird feeling Kawano is going to win Capcom Cup. I don't know why. Like, just something in my brain just feels like Kawano has a good chance. But we'll get to there in just a little bit. Uh, the other main storyline that I'd like to talk about for Cap for this LCQ also is just the character variety. Right? I mean, obviously, we see in Capcom Cup a lot of Lukes. We see a lot of uh, Kens. Not as many JPs, and that's why they all showed up here. So there were so many JPs uh, at this tournament. Holy crap. But that's also because uh, JP is very popular in Asia. JP is very, very popular in, in Asia. And uh, that's where I think the strongest JPs all lie. And so when they all came out here, I feel like they just had the ability to really dominate everybody. I mean, JP was easily by far the most represented character here. And yet in top eight, there was only one JP, right? It was only a... It, oh, there was two, right? Uh, it was Kakeru. No, it was just one. Just one. Just Kakeru. That was it. And in fact, the only character that there were two of was Rashid. <laughs> uh, it was Rashid. So, uh, yeah, I mean, clearly Rashid is super, super strong, right? Um, uh, it was, yeah, this top eight was really varied. I mean, who did we have? We had a Blanca, we had a Cami, a Rashid, a JP, a Ken, a Rashid, a Lily, <laughs> and a DJ, right? And then we come down here, we got a Chun Li, a DJ, uh, a JP, a JP, a JP, a JP, a Manon, a Luke. So, you know, we actually got to see a, a pretty decent variety here and the Manon from random and the Habiki, I mean the Lily from Habiki. I mean, seriously, dude, it, they made, like me and David were saying, the way that random and Habiki played makes me want to use those characters. Makes me want to use those characters and be like, you know what? I can do that too. <laughs> like, and it's like, don't do it, James. <laughs> don't do it. But honestly, like, I, I, it's just, it was amazing to see. In fact, the only characters during this Capcom Cup that we really haven't seen cook like that, I feel like are Jamie, Honda, and Kimberly. So are they the three worst? I don't know. But at this point in time, I think it's pretty safe to say, yeah, there are no low-tier characters in this game. I think the worst character in this game is mid-tier. Uh, honestly, yeah, a lot of JP mirrors knocking each other out early definitely helped uh, thin the JP herd out. But when you have uh, that many JPs, I think it was like six out of the, the top 16, they're going to run into each other a lot. So uh, Ultra David was on stream once. He was on stream once, so... What's more credible is he, Habiki did not rely on OD Condor Spire. Yeah, he didn't. He was really, really good at, you know, just, I mean, it was really his Condor Spire timings, dude. He just kept hitting people and that crouch fierce. Holy crap. So like I said, every time he threw out that crouching heavy punch, I wanted to hear a cash register noise because that move was money for him, man. Oh, man. Um, 
Dude, Condo Spire, it, I mean, me, Jammers even mentioned it on commentary. He's like, me and James have been talking about this, but OD Condor Spire is like one of the most ignorant moves in the game. Because it is. OD Condor Spire is, in fact, broken, right? It's just that so much of Lily outside of that is not great. And OD Condor Spire has the weak, or I should say OD Wind Spire has the weakness that it is drive reversal bait, right? He spends two meters, you spend two meters. So it's kind of like a trade-off in that situation. But again, Habiki didn't rely on OD Condor, uh, OD Wind Spire. He did a lot of regular Wind Spires. And then when he does a lot of the Wind Spires, it's still plus one. It's still in a situation, and now if you V-reverse, if you drive reversal it, you're minus two on the drive gauge because he didn't spend any. And so that's actually not necessarily beneficial for you. That means Lily can just windspire at you all day, and if you keep drive reversaling it, now she just burns you out, and you're in a crappy situation. So... Uh, and that's why I've said I wanted, uh, that's why I said Moba Mouse, who says, that's why I hate Lily as a character, because she feels so forced into one move being cheap AF 99% of the time. And that's why I have said that if I balance Lily, I would nerf OD Condor Spire. I would nerf OD Wind Spire. And that sounds really weird, but I would do that so they could buff other things and flesh her out as a character and make her actually just a uh, uh, stronger. Sim is the same problem, just jump back and teleport all the time. I mean, <laughs> God, that's irritating to deal with, holy crap. But I mean, it is, uh, uh, I don't think that that's the only thing Dalsam can do. I think Dalsam has a lot of really powerful tools beyond just that, so. But yeah, uh, I, and then, oh God, and then random, man. You know, because the thing is, when we all play Manon, a lot of the times when we play Manon, all we do is get angry at what she doesn't have, right? When you watch a Manon, when you play Manon, you're like, God, I don't have crouching medium kick into drive cancel. I don't have this. I don't have a good drive. My drive rush is ass, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're so caught up in what she doesn't have, it's hard for us to realize what she does have. Random was so good at using the range of Manon. Like, it doesn't look like it animation-wise. But, you know, Jury crouching medium kick, Ken crouching medium kick, Cammy crouching medium kick, Kimberly standing medium kick, all the buttons that a lot of people, when they fight against them, they think they're ignorant in range. They're just like, why is this move so good? Why does this move have so much range? Just stupid move. Actually, they all kind of have the same range. <laughs> They're, the difference is like pixels between them. So uh, the, they don't actually have that much more range than each other. And then Manon's crouching medium kick reaches farther than all of those buttons. Manon's crouching medium kick actually is one of the farthest crouching medium kicks in the game. And it just doesn't look like it because she's tall and the pose that she makes really obfuscates how far the range is. Her crouching strong has one of the best crouching ranges uh, ranges for a normal in the game for a crouching strong. And so when you watch random play, a lot of the times he would go in, but instead of trying to get you to grapple or mix you up like we want to do with grapplers, he would always get in and then walk backwards and then throw out a button. Everybody would try to poke her, they would miss, and he would whiff punish them because he's using the panic against grapplers for people to hit buttons to always walk back and whiff punish. That's where a lot of random's power came from. He would get in, walk backwards, see a whiff, and then strong, strong, and do all these other crazy things like that. So again, you know, he, instead of worrying about what Manon didn't have, focused on what Manon did have, which is better range than everyone else, and the command grab threat. And that's how he was able to really, really blow up a lot of people. So again, shout outs to Random and Hibiki. Really sad they had to face each other at the top of uh, top 16, but honestly, they were, uh, they were clearly the MVPs of the tournament. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Vai versus Bon Chan, the, the infamous. Oh my god, it's so 
Death, death is so perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> oh man, but uh, it was it was uh, it was so great to see. And again, you would think that Luke's would just dominate this, but there was basically only uh, one Luke uh, in the top eight. Uh, wasn't there one Luke? I know Punk used Luke. No, there was no Luke's in top eight. There were no Luke's in top eight. Jesus. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, it took all the way to... Noah. Noah was the highest placing Luke. Noah was the highest place placing Luke. Tied for 13th place, dude. Uh, tied for 19th. Ninth place, I should say. Tied for ninth place. Uh, he, oh, no. I'm sorry. Tied for 13th place. Noah was the highest one tied for ninth place. So, uh, 13th place. So, again, it's, it's crazy out there. Uh, Lemp Lempira says... Manon stand HP on block is an auto spacing trap if you don't input anything. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's the way it works. Uh, what do you mean by funny seeing Idom find that out on stream? Uh, you, you just when the game came out, he figured that out and was like, whoa. Uh, Vog Twitch says, do you think there will be little changes in season two because the game is so balanced? I think there will be tweaks to some of the system mechanics that a lot of people do not uh, like. Like, I, I'm sure Dry Rush, something will happen there. I've been talking about perfect parries on social media because I just don't know if there is a good way to change perfect parries. Perfect parries are kind of tuned in such a specific way that I don't know if you could do anything to them right now that wouldn't make them either broken or useless. Like, it's so hard to balance that kind of a mechanic. Uh, I think that's uh, kind of scary, uh, honestly. So I don't know what they're going to do to Perfect Parry. I mean, Daigo just put out a video saying you can't nerf Perfect Parry. If you nerf Perfect Parry, then all of a sudden you have to rebalance Honda. You have to rebalance Luke, et cetera, et cetera, because it becomes that much harder to fight those characters. You have to parry. Uh, you have to parry the Sandblast. In fact, when I was using, I played Ken in ba Battle Hub seriously for the first time and i fought a dalsam player who pretty much blew me up i mean it was first day obviously uh but the only way that i could win games off of him was perfect parrying his limbs like that was the only way that i could win with uh ken against his dalsam is that i could perfect parry his limbs sweep him and get in on him and that was the best i could do uh, without perfect parry, some characters, I mean, the reason why some characters are as strong as they are, the reason why Dalsum can, you know, uh, you know, uh, do all these crazy things like jump and air fireball and teleport and fly around is because, uh, perfect parries are there, right? They, perfect parries hurt the character so much that you can't, you know, weaken some of the most annoying factors about them, but then that makes them scrub killers, which is weird. Ah, it's such a weird situation. So, um, Drive Rush needs to be less abusable by certain characters, and I don't know if I agree with that, Psycho Damo. Uh, I like the fact that Jury and DJ are unique in that their Drive Rushes are just absolute pain in the asses, while as other characters' Drive Rushes aren't as strong. My whole thing is I just want to see it so that the drive rush from everybody has a bigger hurt box. And I had always had the idea that if you hit someone out of the drive rush, they tumble forward with the same real timing so that if you check them, you get a combo on them. Just like if you get hit by the drive rush, they get a combo on you. I think that's a little fair. <laughs> I, I, that's kind of thing. But I don't want to change how powerful DJ or Jury's drive rushes are. I like them being kind of abusable and being part of their personality because I think that's interesting. I just think that we need to make it so that you can be rewarded for stopping the drive uh, rush as much as you can be rewarded for landing a drive rush. I mean, I love the fact that throwing someone out of a drive parry does 2,000 damage. Like, you lose a fifth of your life. Like, I like that. Like, I think that's a great kind of a balance mechanic. So, uh, counter stuff like Hana, but stop random, normal, perfect parries. 
which way? So they shouldn't be perf they shouldn't be perfect carrying random normals, only specials having to choose between. So wait, what's the suggestion, Moba Mouse, exactly? Uh, my suggestion on social media, in case you didn't know, is that I want it to be like Reuse V Trigger 2 when it's successful from Street Fighter V, and that if you ever land a perfect parry, you suck them in, and it turns into a canned animation where you punch them and do about 1,000 to 1,200 damage, and then it just pushes them back a little bit, and then you keep fighting, and the enemy is at minus three. So basically, you get a perfect parry. It's now your turn because you're plus three in that situation, and so they have to respect your buttons. Uh, but that way, you don't get the side switches, and you don't get the combos into level three. So that way, perfect parries are used exactly the same way they are currently. They're still just as safe as they were before. It says all you're changing is the reward you get from it. Now, a lot of people say that that's a terrible idea. And again, that's absolutely valid because like I'm just spitballing here. Like that's how my idea for balancing a lot of times is very rarely change how it works, but change the result of what it does. <laughs> You know, I want it to still be strong. I want it to still be good. I still want it to be as safe, but the reward you get from it changes. That's kind of how I like to balance things. So, uh, oh, dude, catching people out of a drive rush with an SPD is one of the greatest feelings ever, dude. <laughs> Make drive rush take Blanca Ball World Warrior counter, counter hit damage. <laughs> Well, like I said, if you if their hurt box extended and they stumbled forward on hit, that's exactly what it would be. That's exactly what it would be is they're technically taking more damage, but that just means that you have to do the damage yourself manually. Anyways, we'll talk about balance ideas for Street Fighter VI after Capcom Cup because I think that's when it's going to become particularly relevant. But I, I really do think the LCQ, because the LCQ is so strong and because th this is like literally the best of the best going out against each other in traditional brackets, I think this is a really, really good indication of the character balance. And yeah, I mean, honestly, having one Luke in top 16 uh, and even in the top 16, you know, we have one, two, three, four, we had five jps clearly i mean look i don't think jp is the best but this is definitely argument that yeah jp is kind of good <laughs> kind of good and yeah that setup that i was like why didn't i go just drive parry the thing i honestly did not know there was a that was a gapless sequence i actually did not know that was a gapless sequence until high fight mentioned it to me and i was like Oh, like I seriously thought that that was, uh, there was something that you could uh, get through there. So yeah, Punk with Luke, but that was definitely secondary, kind of a desperation pick, uh, honestly. So I don't count it that much. Uh, Cup starts tomorrow and goes all the way through Sunday. Group stages, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday is the Street Fighter League finals. Sunday will be top 16 all the way through championships. Uh, to the grand champion. So it'll be five more days. Uh, yeah, just like Psycho Damo says, Thursday to Saturday, Sunday. Yep, five days. Uh, no, Wednesday. It starts tomorrow, Psycho Damo. Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, and then Sunday. So five days right there. Uh, five days. So, uh, I mean, I hope I get paid and egg rolls. <laughs> And egg rolls. And yes, all of top 16 is going to be best of five. All of top 16 is going to be best of five. So, <clears throat> Cammy's not fun against Blanca. Blanca standing heavy kick ruins too much of what Cammy wants to do. Uh, that standing heavy kick is... Pff, Screw that move, dude. I hate Blanca, dude. I'm, okay, that's the last thing I'll talk about. I told you guys Blanca was good. I've been saying Blanca's been a top four character my whole entire time this game is out. And you saw what Problem X did with that guy. I told y'all that Bl I, 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 I. 
Sorry, wrong button. I told, I oh, shit, told, come on. Where's the stupid thing? There we go. I told you all Blanca was one of the best characters in the game. I told you all Blanca was one of the best characters. No, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, I, I made that tweet just because I, it's just fun to be like, I told you so. Uh, I really do think Blanca, though, is probably top six. And I really, really feel like uh, uh, he's only going to get better. I, he just has too much variety and has too much potential. So if we never got a patch at this point, uh, I'm kind of rating, I kind of uh, rank Blanca high up because of future Blanca, basically. Uh, I, I feel like Blanca is just too, too strong. Uh, so currently I have him in the second tier along with Chun-Li and DJ. So it's Ken Luke JP that I have Chun-Li, Luke, and I'm sorry, Chun-Li, DJ, and Blanca in the next group. And then the group after that will be uh, Kami, Rashid, uh, Kami, Rashid, Guile, and Jury. So I have them. That's my top 10, basically. And within those groups, it's hard to kind of order them, but I think that that's good. I mean, I was scared that they were going to buff Blanca Psychodamo with how poor he's been doing with only one representative from only Mana RD. I was really worried they were going to buff him. <laughs> So I was like, that's why when people started asking, like, uh, hey, is um, who's going to be a problem in season two, do you predict? I was like, Blanca. And people were like, you don't think they're going to buff him, do you? And I'm like, dude, he's not doing as well as he should be. So I feel like they might buff him because they, they think he's not good. But I feel like Blanca is just going to be... Uh, now that Problem X has won with him, and we'll see how Problem X and Mena do, I really hope they do super well with Blanca because I need Capcom to understand that Blanca is super powerful. I just really need them to understand that, <laughs> please. And the other thing too is like when you pick Blanca, I feel like you're just of a certain mindset. There's not a lot of players out there that will be like, oh, okay, this is, this is my serious character, but, Problem X and Mena are known for playing unorthodox characters, right? Uh, especially Mena. I mean, he was like the only birdie in the world. Nobody was talking about birdie as the best character in Street Fighter V until he won with him. And then everybody was like, birdie's so good. He's so cheap. And it's just like, come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> uh, Oh, I'm, yeah, <laughs> Blanca's not used, people not used to him being top tier. I don't think Blanca's fine, man. I think Blanca is, I hate that character so much. I fought a Blanca that just went a screen away and did one of nine things, and I lost zero to ten against him, dude. I couldn't beat him at all. Like, I couldn't do jack shit with my cami, dude. I was just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and he just murdered me, and I was like, uh... Uh, so yeah, I, 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 oh, you are a Blanca main original gamer. All right. Not listening to your takes on Blanca. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Blanca's only been good in hyper fighting CVS one, CVS two, and now in street fighter six. Like that's the only time Blanca has been super strong, I think. So, uh, Oh, yeah, that's the thing. I, that was one of the things that I said on commentary. I was like, all you people who were all thinking, like, wait till Street Fighter VI comes out, then you'll be... No, dude. Fighting game players, when they're good, they know what they're looking for to win. They know what to find to win. And that's the thing. The best fighting game players out there are the best fighting game players out there because they're the best at learning. They have learned how to learn the best. They have learned how to teach themselves things the best. And that's going to be what makes them good at just about any fighting game. That is why when I try to teach fighting games, 
I'm telling you it's okay to make the wrong choices, to make the mistakes. When I tell you to choose pet moves, I don't tell you which moves to use for the characters. I'm making you make that decision so that you can find out you may have picked the wrong move and want to switch to another move that might actually do better than you know what you originally thought, etc., etc. Learning how to learn, learning how to adjust is going to be your biggest strength in fighting games all the time, all the time. And so uh, if you are really, if you're a top player in any of these games, that is your main skill. And so it's easy to bring that skill to any other fighting game. It, it just really is. I like to watch Wonka, but hate to play against. I said that to David on commentary. I was like, this guy's so fun to watch, but I never want to fight him. I never want to fight him. Blanca level two is, oh God, that move is so dumb. It's like he just activates it and you're just like, well, I'm scared. I don't know what to do anymore. Oh man. But uh, that's all I really had to say about the last chance qualifiers here. Again, you know, uh, I just think that these results are really telling. I think this just really showed us a lot about this, that we only had one Luke in top 16, that we had a Manon and a, a, and a, and a Lily in top, six, in top 16, a Lily in top 8. You know, JP, obviously a lot of JPs here, so clearly JP is a very, very strong character. Uh, even a lot of the people who thought Chun-Li was the best character. No Chun-Li in top eight, right? Maybe Rashid is better than a lot of these people think. But again, like I said, if you ran this last chance qualifier, you know, 20 times, I think you'll have a different top eight all 20 times. And so uh, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say, which means the game is shockingly very balanced. And uh, I, I know a lot of people want to say that it's not. And I, I know it's opinion. I know that, you know, everybody has a right to their opinion. But I just don't think you're right. <laughs> I just don't think you're right. I think this game is super balanced. <laughs> right. And so that's the thing, Moba Mouse. You kind of hit it on the nail saying that Blanca feels like he's supposed to be a joke character, right? He's goofy. And so that's why I don't think a lot of people take him seriously also from the top player side. I don't think a lot of people pick him because they just don't think of him as that character who is going to be really fundamentally solid to win. And on top of that, I don't, you know, that's why I feel like you know, certain people gravitate to him and a lot of the Blanca players are just absolutely manically insane, right? Um, it's just because he feels like he's supposed to be a trolley joke character, you know? That was just kind of how it was. And so it was, uh, I, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of top players haven't gravitated towards him, uh, honestly. Uh... Dude, Blanca's level two is so, so ridiculous, dude. It's so ridiculous. Um, in any case, that's the last chance qualifier. Let's talk about these groups, shall we?